Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to create a festive 3D Christmas tree lantern from paper. I'll show you how easy it is to prepare and assemble it from start to finish. And we'll even customize your very own unique design. And the best part, we can make the whole thing from just five sheets of cardstock and an LED light. That's right, no glue is needed. I just love easy and simple projects like this. They may look intricate, but they're so easy to put together and they only take a few supplies. So few supplies, in fact, that you only need five sheets of 12 by 12 inch cardstock. That's right, and an LED light like this to make them. Plus some copy paper or vellum to diffuse the light if you'd like, but those are completely optional. And if you want to use the star pieces that go on top, those do take a little glue, but I like the result with or without the star. They're both beautiful. Now in this video tutorial, I'll use a Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine to cut out my pieces, but you can use any cutting machine that fits 12 by 12 inch or eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. That includes the original Cricut Maker, any of the Explorer series machines, the Cricut Venture, and the Cricut Joy Extra. And original Cricut Joy users, I didn't forget about you. I've included a Joy version of the file so you can make your very own mini tree. There's only a few other things you'll need, but don't worry, I've got a full list of tools and supplies, plus links on exactly where to find them in my materials list. You'll find it over at jennifermaker.com 547. And because everyone learns differently, you can also find written instructions there too. It has photos of the steps and tips. So are you ready to get started? Let me show you where to get the files and then how to cut and even customize your very own tree. Step one, get my free 3D paper tree lantern designs. First, download my designs at jennifermaker.com slash 547. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 547 and click the link to download the designs. There are four designs in the SVG folder. Snowflakes, poinsettias, happy holidays, and a file with blank panels that you can customize. Each design has score and no score versions too. I'll use a Cricut Maker 3 to make this project, but you can use any cutting machine that fits 12 by 12 inch or eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. There's even a special design for those of you with Cricut Joy cutting machines. Look for the folder called For Joy Users, that has smaller files that can be cut on a Cricut Joy. In this video, I'll show you the basic steps to make the no-score poinsettia design using cardstock and vellum. And then we'll create a custom tree together. Step two, prepare and cut your 3D paper tree. On a blank Cricut Design Space canvas, click Upload and then Upload Image. Click Browse and find the SVG you want to use. Click Upload and then select the new design under Recent Uploads and click Add to Canvas. Here's how the Poinsettia SVG file with no score lines looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. Now it's already sized to fit either 8.5 by 11 inch or 12 by 12 inch cardstock, so you don't have to do a thing. The gray diffuser layers are optional, but I'll cut them to demonstrate how you can add them without glue too. The yellow star pieces are also optional, and glue is the easiest way to add those. If you want to avoid using glue entirely, just click the layers eye icons to hide them. With the correct machine selected in the top right, click Make. On the Prepare screen, set the material size to match each kind of paper you're using. I'm using 8.5 by 11 inch vellum for the diffuser layers and 12 by 12 inch cardstock for the trees and panels. Once you're done, select the first mat again and then click continue. 
Now click Browse All Materials and find the setting for your diffusers. Use Copy Paper 20 Pound if that's what you're using, but I'm going to select Vellum since I'm using Vellum. Select your material and click Done. Now for either option, I recommend you change the pressure to more for a cleaner cut. Place your diffuser paper face up on a green standard grip machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's really well stuck to the mat. Make sure your fine point blade is clean and in the clamp. And load your mat into your Cricut and press the go button to begin cutting. When the cut is complete, unload your mat, flip your mat over onto your work surface and roll the mat back away from the material to release it without curling or ripping. And then cut the second sheet in the same way. Next up are the cardstock mats. Set the material to medium cardstock 80 pound and change the pressure to more for a cleaner cut again. Place your cardstock face up on a green standard grip machine mat and again use a brayer to make sure everything is really well adhered. Now because there are a lot of intricate cuts in this project, a clean blade will save you so much time and materials. To get my blade clean, I use aluminum foil. That's just the regular stuff from your kitchen. So in between each mat, take a balled up piece of aluminum foil and carefully poke your Cricut blade in and out of that ball about 30 to 40 times. Doing this removes paper fibers, adhesive, and oxidation. And this really can make a difference in your cuts. And then load your machine mat into your Cricut and press the go button to begin cutting. When the cut is finished, unload the mat and flip your mat over onto your work surface and roll the mat away from your cardstock to release your cardstock cleanly. And remember to place your pieces face up so they're the right way later on. You can use the spatula to help lift stubborn or delicate areas if you need to. And then continue on and cut the rest of your mats. Custom panels with Happy Holidays. If you want to create custom panels, start with the blank tree design with score in its name and add that to your canvas. Now with a design selected, click the ungroup icon. This design looks similar to the other one, but the panels have big plain openings all ready for us to add our own design. Scroll down and you'll see snowflakes, holiday lights, and some flower and vine elements that you can add to your panel. You can use these or use whatever designs you wish. I'll show you how to customize your tree using these designs in this video. First, we'll use the string of lights to customize our first panel. Click and drag those elements away from the others. Then drag a bounding box around the rest of the elements and click Group. Then in the Layers panel, use the eye icon to hide everything so you only see the one blank panel including its grouped score layer and the string of lights. Then use the plus sign to zoom in on the blank panel. Now click the text icon to create a text box and then type whatever word or phrase you would like. I'm going to type Happy Holidays in all capital letters. Now size it down so it's easier to work with. Choose a font from the font drop down if you like, but I'm just going to stick with Cricut Sans. And then when you've got your font, close the menu. Thicker text is going to be easier to cut and read, so change the style to bold if that's an option. Now, it won't fit in the panel right now, but here are some ways to adjust the design. If you're using more than one word, move your cursor right after the first one and press enter or return on your keyboard to move the second one to a new line. With the text box still selected, click advanced and then ungroup to lines. With the lock icon under size closed to maintain proportions, click and drag the bounding box on each word to resize it so it fits across the opening of one of the blank panels overlapping the frame a little on each side. Click the Shapes menu and select the square. Click the lock icon to unlock the square's proportions and then click and drag the bounding box's corner to resize it into a long, skinny, horizontal rectangle. Make it large enough that it overlaps the area in between your two words, as well as the frame. 
Now move the words to if you need. As much of the outer letters as possible should be touching the frame. Zoom in if you need to see better. Select the element you'll use to connect everything, then click Arrange and Bring to Front. Then click Duplicate so you can use the copy and keep the original. Now drag, rotate, and resize the elements to fill the frame, duplicating it as desired. Overlap them with the words, the edges of the frame, and each other. Don't worry if some of the elements extend beyond the outer edges of the frame. Click the Shapes icon and select another square. Click the Lock icon to unlock the proportions, then resize it to roughly the height of the panel and wide enough so that it covers all of the elements extending past the panel's outer edge. Hover your cursor over a corner of the bounding box until the Rotate icon shows. Then click and rotate the rectangle clockwise until its right edge is at the same angle as the panel's left edge, about 9 degrees. Drag it so it's overlapping any elements extending past the panel's outer frame. With the rectangle selected, click the Duplicate icon. Now click back on the original rectangle, then hold the Shift key down to select it and one of the extending elements and then click Slice. Delete the slice results except for the piece remaining inside the frame as part of the design. Move the other rectangle into the frame in the same spot as the other one was, and duplicate the rectangle. Keep slicing away the remainder of the elements extending past the left side of the panel. Once the left side is finished, select the last duplicated rectangle. Click flip, and then choose Flip Horizontal. Now slice away the elements extending past the right side of the panel. In the Layers panel, find the group with the panel frame. Select it and click the Ungroup icon. Find the score line layer from that group. It will be colored red and click its name. Rename it to Score. Now double check everything and make sure you're happy with how your customized panel looks. Then drag a bounding box around the frame to select it and all of its added elements. Hold Shift and click on the score layer in the Layers panel to deselect it. Click Combine and choose Weld to permanently attach everything but the score layer for now. Now you may notice small cutout areas within the design that look too tiny or intricate for your Cricut to cut. We can take care of those. To do that, so with the panel selected, click the contour icon. Scroll down to the bottom of the list to find the tiniest cutouts, then click them to hide them. When you're done, click the X to exit the pop-up. Select the layer that you named Score. Under Arrange, click Bring to Front. Then under Operation, change it to Score. Select the score lines and frame, and then click Attach. Your custom panel is all done. Select the custom panel and click Duplicate until you have six matching panels. If you have any hidden pieces, click the eye icons to unhide them, then delete anything you don't want to cut. I'll delete these five empty panels and the extra design elements as I no longer need them. And then we're ready to cut. Step 3. Assemble your 3D Paper Tree Lantern Let's assemble the tree lantern with the poinsettia designs and the dash cut lines. If you look at the tops, this one has two notches at the top. The next has a notch going down to the bottom of the star, and the last one has a notch at the top of the star. Take the first frame and then slot the second one into it, first at the top, then at the bottom. Curve the cardstock to make them fit together. Press the two layers flat and then grab the third frame piece and slot it into the other two. Once the three pieces are assembled, space out the layers to make the tree stand up just like this. Find the large bottom base piece which has notches all the way around it. Insert the base piece into the middle of the assembled frame. Align the base's notches with the notches on the bottom of the assembled tree frame. Begin inserting them one at a time, 
You'll need to bend the cardstock just a bit, so be careful not to tear it, but you can do this. Insert the top base piece the same way. Remember, take your time and go in the order to make it easier on yourself. Now lay out the panels face down so all the designs are in the same direction. For the poinsettia panels, there should be a flower in each lower right corner. Each panel has tabs with scored or dashed lines at the top and the bottom. Fold all of the tabs up so they're going in the same direction. If you cut the diffuser pieces, lay one on a panel using the cardstock tabs to keep it in place. The diffuser fits snugly enough inside the folded panel tabs that you don't even need glue. Add the diffusers to the other panels the same way. Slide the large bottom tabs into a slot on the bottom tree base. Unfold the small tabs to lock the bottom of the panel into place. Slide the panel's small top tab into the slot on the top tree base. Now unfold the small tabs to lock the top of the panel into place. Insert the next four panels the same way, but leave one panel off for now. Now test your remote controlled LED light to make sure it's working and responds well to your remote. Insert the LED light into the tree through that missing panel, the one you haven't put on yet, centering it inside. Now you can insert the last panel. That's why we wanted the remote controlled light. And admire your work. The star pieces. If you cut the optional star pieces, I found it was much easier to add them while they're flat before the tree is assembled. Here's where you will need a little bit of glue. One at a time, add some craft glue to the back of each star half and affix them to the star shapes at the top of the tree. Once the glue is dry, assemble your tree just as I showed you. Step four, show it off. And here are the finished 3D paper tree lanterns, all lit up and ready for the holidays. I just love how simple these are to make, even the custom version. They come together quickly and they look so impressive, don't you think? And the fact that they use so few materials means that you can make a whole bunch of them fast and easy. These look so pretty out on display at the holidays. You can even display a regular size along with a joy size version to mix it up. I can't wait to see how you show yours off. Now, if you have any questions about working with cardstock, your Cricut machine, or anything else Cricut or craft related that I might be able to help you with, please let me know. You can leave your question below this video or come ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And please come share photos of your gorgeous tree lanterns. Posting pictures lets you show off your beautiful creations, plus it inspires others to create too, myself included. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.